Blood pressure 121 over 70 and stable, heart 75, oxygen 97% saturation. Novocaine, please. Inside of you is a beautiful woman, Barbara. Let's see if we can give you the face you deserve. Prosecution, please proceed. Uh, nice haircut, Mr. Marks. Thank you, Miss McGrath. Um, Mr. Marks, do you know what manslaughter is? Objection. Defendant is not a legal expert, Your Honor. Inquiring minds want to know. Answer the question, Mr. Marks. It means when somebody intends to hurt somebody, but in the heat of passion, he accidentally kills him. Very good, Mr. Marks. Okay, let's review. One evening after work, you went after your boss with a two-foot length of heavy pipe, an item not commonly found in an accounting firm, because at lunchtime, she had told you you would not get that promotion. That's not what... I haven't asked you a question yet. But you kept that heat of passion going for six and a half hours while you were looking for that piece of pipe. And you followed her out to the parking lot, and then you hit her with that pipe 23 times. Now, my question to you is, do you know what murder is? Objection, objection, I object, Your Honor. Okay, next up is the Allen kidnapping case over in Summit. Uh, give it to Jack. Where are my keys? Uh, Jack Norton's in Calais until the 12th. Carl Albert's next up. Carol's too emotional for this. Well, what about Jan Oaks, Carrie? Her mother's ill. She flew to Toronto last night. <gasps> Frank wants to see you before you leave, Carrie. Your keys are in your hand. We still got a grand jury prep for Cleavon Brown, the Hoboken yep. killings, and that battery of our favorite recidivist, Al Diamond. Oh, and that arson murder. Uh, you take Cleavon, sick Carl on Mr. Diamond. What about the rest? Um, give him to Jack when he gets back. Serves him right for going to Hawaii. That's right. Uh, Frank? Carrie, come on, sit down and relax. Let's talk about life, our legal philosophy. Uh, that's cute, Frank. Robin's bandages are coming off. My appointment's at five. I'm late. How is she doing? Oh, She's terrific. I'm, I'm a wreck. Look, I need a second. I'm very concerned about Bill Marks. Now, I sat in in the courtroom this morning and I watched your cross-examination. It was very good stuff. But I cannot afford to have that bum get off on manslaughter. That means he'd be out in three years. Bill Marks' parole officer hasn't been born yet. <laughs> You're gonna make a terrific judge, Gary. Your nomination's on the governor's desk, by the way. Thanks. And his desk will be your desk soon, I'm sure. Well, don't you forget to vote. Okay. Give my love to Robin. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, my mom's here. I gotta go. Bye. See you tomorrow. Honey, I am so sorry I'm late. I had to schmooze with Frank Green. It's okay. A lot of moms don't pick their kids up at all. I mean, you can't speed if you're gonna be a judge, Mom. Mr. Taylor approved my photography project, so I have to take pictures of lots and lots of trees. Oh, that's great. We'll do that together. Is your face still sore? No. Nope. Everyone thinks my bandages are cool. Except for Brian Walker, who said I looked like a penguin. She wasn't feeling well today. Let's see. I'll bet you're Robin McGrath. 
I was in a car accident. Were you really? Yeah, my daddy and I, we went to the movies. When we came out of the parking lot, a pizza van rammed us. It was flying glass and it was very loud. But I didn't even cry. You're a very brave girl. She'll be right in. Are you ready? Yep. Ready. Her dad forgot to have her put her seatbelt on. Well, Dr. Smith's a miracle worker. She'll be fine. I know. Excuse me. I have a five o'clock appointment with Dr. Smith. I'm running a bit late. Oh, go right in. Thank you. I know, I know that young woman. I, I can't remember her name. Uh, Barbara Tompkins. Tompkins? Okay, now, this is the last of them, so hold still. Oh, still. Is that it? Uh-huh. Are you ready? Yeah. Wow, I can hardly see him. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Can I go to Mom? Sure, of course. Great. Be careful now, don't run. Mom, look! Oh, let me see. Oh, honey, it looks terrific. Oh, thank you, Dr. Smith. Um. Are these scars gonna go away? Oh, absolutely. We couldn't leave scars on such a pretty face. <laughs> but you're gonna have to be careful for a while, Robin. I want you to promise me that you will wear a helmet if you must play soccer, okay? Okay, Dr. Smith. Good. You know, you're very lucky to have been born with such beauty. It's a gift. Now it's up to you to take care of it. So I'll see you again uh, next week, all right? <laughs> Don't worry, Mrs. McGrath. There won't be a trace, I assure you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Let's go, baby. Do you know that lady, Mom? No, but she reminds me of someone. Do you think my scars will be gone by Monday? Lisa wanted to see him. You are a nutcake. Okay, um... What do we have for dinner? You want Japanese or Italian takeout? No, we just had Italian last night, and I'm so tired of sushi, Mom. Well, Uncle Jonathan and Aunt Grace did invite us up to their house. Yes, yeah. real home-cooked food! Okay, you're on. <laughs> Hold on. Exercise and self-control, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hello, Senator. Mm -hmm. Grace, you look lovely. Oh, thank you, dear. Why don't you check out the computer room? There might just be a new game in there for you. Oh, great. Oh, this is just what I need. Frank tells me my judicial nomination is on the governor's desk. Jonathan, thank you for sponsoring me. Frank thinks it's his doing, but I know better. Let him think it. Oh, very politic. <laughs> You are going to like being a judge. I don't know. I've been a prosecutor for 12 years. There are a lot of things I like about it. Carrie, being a judge is much more stable, especially for Robin. And you'll be terrific at it. The criminals won't think so. This guy, Gary, he's got a PhD in art history. It's not marriage. It's a drink, a movie, life outside the courtroom. Let's face it, you need a girl. Uh-oh, don't need this. Don't look. It's Bob. Hi, Gary. You look terrific. 
How are you? Okay. It'd have been nice if you'd called Robin after her doctor's appointment. She was waiting. I did. I left a message for her. Kids don't relate to messages, Bob. They like actual contact. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll call her tonight. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you. I mean that. Mm -hmm. You too, Corey. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, and look at them. He sure got over her marriage fast. Would you stop it already? Listen, your sense with him is commuted. You should be doing backflips. But what I want to know, what is he doing with Jimmy Weeks? Don't you read the papers? Jimmy was indicted for embezzlement. Bob's defending him for big bucks. No more helmets. I can even swim and climb trees. I'm so glad. Let's see. But Dr. Smith is kind of strange. He was real angry at Daddy about the seatbelt. And he said that it was my duty to safeguard my beauty. What's safeguard mean, Mom? Well... Oh, hi, Pamela. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I'm here for my appointment. the woman who was here last time that we were here? Yeah, that was her just now. Yeah. That's what I thought. Lucy, did we ever do a case involving a Barbara Tompkins or a Pamela Worth? Mmm. No. Lucky girl. Hi. Mm. Oh, I know that face. You're doing court. <laughs> OK. Oh, get a bar. Um, Ready? Thanks, Mr. Hart sent me roses. No occasion. Aren't they sweet? Hey, what's the matter? Hey, these are for me. We got closing argument. I'll be there. Joe, do you remember the Sweetheart Roses murder case? What happened to Good Morning Joe? Yeah, I remember the case. Uh, Skip Reardon murdered his wife. Suzanne. It was on the front page for nine weeks. Frank Green got famous by putting Skip in jail. Right, right. Who handled the appeal? That would be, uh, Jeff Dorso. Call him. Make me an appointment. I want to talk to him about the case. Now, wait a minute. Come on. That was 11 years ago. Let's do it. Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? Joe Palumbo. Hi. Hi. Carrie McGrath. Jeff Dorso, hi. Don't you have an office, Mr. Dorso? Uh, yeah, I do, but it's, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> and uh, Joe said you were a class act. Well, so uh, where are you in the rear of the field? Nowhere. I've uh, taken it to every court that'll hear it. The federal court just denied my second habeas petition. What's your interest? Well, I, I just uh, joined the prosecutor's office when they were trying the case, and I was in court for the sentencing when Skip declared his innocence. Oh, it's all here. It's just a brief of the whole case. You can take it home if you'd like. What's wrong? Suzanne Reardon. Yeah. OK, well, uh, fill me in on the details. I don't remember. Skip called from his office at the shop about 10.30. There was no answer, so he left a message. When he got home at 1, he found her body. Her neck was broken, and the roses were scattered all over her body. He called 911 immediately. Did her father testify that she was afraid of Skip? Yeah. Suzanne lived in terror of Skip's insane attacks of jealousy, were his exact words. It was a crock, but the jury believed him. What about the message Skip left? There was nothing on the answering machine. There was no tape in it. That message was Skip's only alibi, because the machine encoded the time with each message. Couldn't he have left a message and still killed her? We know she made a call to a friend at 9, so the murder was after that. But the point is, Skip couldn't account for the tape. To the jury, it looked like he took the tape and destroyed it. I will take this home. Thanks. Sure. I hear you're going to be a judge. How did you know that? Defense attorneys know about judicial appointments even before the appointees do. We like to know who the enemy is. Who sponsored you? Uh, State Senator Jonathan Hoover. He's an old friend. Good friend to have.
glad you're up. It's Carrie McGrath. I'm not up. No one is up. Um, is Dr. Kenneth Smith Suzanne's father? Y yeah. Didn't you know that? Was Charles his middle name? Charles. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. What difference does it make? I can't, I swear, I can't believe this. He is my daughter's doctor. Yeah, he must have dropped the Kenneth after the trial. Jeff, he has made over at least two other women to look exactly like Suzanne. What? Are you kidding me? Uh, you know, he, he is cloning his daughter's faith. I, I swear, Jeff, I'm not making this up. I've seen them in the office. They look exactly like Suzanne. The night of the murder, the babysitter working in that house saw a black Mercedes leave here just before midnight. Mm -hmm. She thought she saw an L and maybe an S or a 5 on the license plates, but she wasn't very sure. So how'd you get a key? The realtor's a pal of mine. Oh. You know everybody. Just about. Suzanne's body was... Uh, Lying right down there, covered with roses. No note, no prints, no witnesses, nothing. You check florists, right? Yeah, no deliveries, no orders to any florists within 50 miles. Hmm. How was their marriage? Lousy at the end. She had just asked Skip for a divorce, and they had a fight about it. Unfortunately, the meter man overheard it. He said Skip was really steamed, which didn't help the defense too much. The trial was a disaster. No one saw Skip when he went back to the shop that night. He said he left a message for her. There was no message on the machine. He said there was a piece of jewelry missing, but nothing else was stolen. Bottom line, Dr. Smith was very convincing about Skip's jealous rages, and Skip had no alibi. The flowers were up here? Yeah. And no scissors? No, why? Well, in the initial police report, they said they couldn't find them, but Skip said that when he came home, Suzanne was cutting the stems with scissors. It wasn't an issue. Where did you see a police report? Well, I'm a DA, remember? <laughs> when you're new, you're assigned a mentor who shows you bits of everything, and I met Frank Green and read the police report in the Rudin case. Anyway, Suzanne was an athlete, and the cop said that there had been a struggle, so it occurred to me that she might have used the scissors to defend herself against her attacker, and he would have taken the scissors because his blood was on him, and if he had been wounded, he would have gone to the emergency room to be sewed up. Did you tell this to anyone in the prosecutor's office? Well, yeah, I, I, I told my mentor. I thought we should check out emergency rooms for that night. What did he say? She. She said, whose side are you on? I said, what are you going for, a conviction or justice? And she didn't like that. So the next day, she came back and said, um, Reardon is guilty, period. Don't rock the boat, especially if you want to work in homicide. So, I didn't rock the boat. I'm now trial chief, and Skip's been in jail for 10 years. So now you're looking for redemption. You didn't have to tell me. That counts for something. I want to get Skip Reardon out of jail if he didn't do it. All right, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The district court for the Southern District of New York is now sitting. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are about to hear the opening statements of the government and of the defense. The government is required to give you an outline of what they say they intend to prove. The coroner said that the killer broke her neck. Whoever it was must have been in a terrible rage. Was there ever any real evidence of Skip's jealousy? Yeah. It was circumstantial, but very damaging. Suzanne had been beaten up, apparently. Two friends testified to her bruises. Skip's version was she fell on the ice. But Dr. Smith said Suzanne told him Skip beat her up. In fact, Smith wept on the stand when he said it. Well, did she fall on the ice or was she beaten up? Two days of contradictory medical testimony was inconclusive. The jury believed her daddy's tears. Hmm. See the diamond pin she's wearing? Mm -hmm. That's the one that was stolen. 
Suzanne was incredibly beautiful. I mean, she made my knees wobble. Mr. Weeks wrote checks on the account of Foundation for Learning, his charitable organization, to the Museum of Science in Philadelphia. And Barney Haskell, his accountant and co-defendant in this case, volunteered his services every quarter to the museum. And Barney Haskell made sure that Mr. Weeks' gifts to that museum disappeared. Bet if she were ugly, it would have been a routine murder. So where do we go from here? Um, take the record with me. Are you on board or not? Well, are you? The defense did a lousy job. They had incompetent witnesses. They didn't prepare Skip to testify. And they let Suzanne come off like some kind of a goddess. Well, someone got mad enough to kill her, and I don't believe it was her husband. Uh, I trust you've been following the gubernatorial campaign? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna vote for Frank. Good. Because he's the incumbent governor's choice to succeed him. And the point is? Frank Green prosecuted the Reardon case. Now, if you say he railroaded an innocent man, then you'd be smearing the reputation of the governor's hand-picked successor, the same governor who makes all the judicial appointments. I'm having a nasty sense of deja vu. In other words, don't rock the boat. Well, you ask me for my opinion. What if Skip is innocent? What if Dr. Smith is lying? And what about Dr. Smith cloning his daughter's face? It's bizarre, but that still doesn't make Skip Reardon innocent. You're relying on a lot of what is, Carrie. Well, what if you put Frank's nomination in jeopardy? In my opinion, you could be jeopardizing your judicial appointment. Think about it, please. But I'll support whatever you decide. my accountant and now he's gonna turn government witness against me that stool pigeon it's just a rumor well you are gonna put a stop to that but you're gonna be a rumor you understand so why did you get divorced uh, Bob wanted me to be there for him and I wasn't I went from law school to a federal clerkship to four years with a blood-sucking litigator to the DA's office, you know. Bob and I just never made any time for each other. All my spare time went to Robin. And I don't cook. So it didn't hurt that uh, Alice's daddy hired Bob into his glitzy law firm. You know, so he just found some greener pastures to go to. Are you married? I'm, I'm engaged. Her name's Janet, but we haven't set a date. I've been too busy. That's what I did. No. I don't know. No, you are. Meet my daughter, Robin. Oh, hi, Mom. I had a great time. Good, baby. Uh, this is Jeff Dorso. Hi. Hi, Robin. And this is her dad, Bob Canellan. Uh, Jeffrey Dorso. Hey. How are you, Bob? Didn't you handle the Reardon appeal? Yeah, I'm still on it. Oh. Oh, I thought it was over. Obviously, I'm mistaken. It's nice to meet you. Give me a kiss. Uh, don't forget your bag. That's a kiss. I don't understand about all the jewelry. Neither did the jury. Suzanne would turn up with new jewelry every now and then. She told Skip that her father gave it to her. But when Smith got on the stand, he said that Skip accused Suzanne of getting the jewelry from other men. Well, it sounds like Skip was creating a motive to justify killing Suzanne. Exactly, except that he didn't kill her. And I think Smith knew it. Think Smith killed his own daughter? No one ever raised that question. 
Find one guy who gave her a trinket and Smith is discredited. But what if the jewelry did come from other men? Did Smith know? And if he did, why lie and say there weren't any? But here's the kicker. Smith denied having any knowledge of the diamond pin Skip told the cops was stolen that night. Why? Why did Suzanne file for divorce from Skip? I'll let Skip tell you that tomorrow. Oh. I made it very clear to Skip that your interest is unofficial. Good. Had him tell that to Frank Green. Skip, hi. This is Carrie McGrath. Hi. McGrath and McGrath. A lot of guys in here know you. Oh, it's nice I could find him a good place to live. <laughs> why did Dr. Smith lie? I mean, why do you want to make you the killer? He, uh, he adored her. He revered her. Like, it was almost religious. After the funeral, there was a wake. Uh, I was trying to comfort him, and I said uh, how kind she was, how many lives she touched. And he gave me this angry, tearful stare, and he said, no one knew her, no one deserved her. She was mine. And I guess if he uh, thought he owned her, then he needed to punish someone for taking her, and he chose me. Did you want the divorce? No, no not at all. I felt like I got hit by a truck. I mean, Suzanne was incredible. She'd been living with her father, and when we got married, she was like a bird out of the cage. I know she loved me. But uh, he would see her every week, and he talked to her a lot, called her a lot, and then he gave her all his jewelry. And little by little, uh, she didn't want me around anymore. I asked her if uh, she'd fallen in love with somebody, and she swore there was no one else. Maybe she was lying, I don't know. Maybe that wasn't what she wanted. She was what I wanted. I love Suzanne. Why would I kill her? I, I know you're, you're sticking your neck out. But I got no other options. No more appeals. You're my last chance to get out of here. Morning, Mom. Hi, baby. I think Jeffrey likes you, Mom. <laughs> well, you like him because he cooks. <laughs> he likes me because my boss can reopen the Reardon case. But he's engaged. Are beautiful people beautiful from the time they're born? Well, some are, and some aren't. Dr. Smith said that some people are given beauty while others attain it, but it must never be wasted. He said that to you? Uh-huh. Do some people go to him to get beautiful? Oh, yeah, they do. Is that how Suzanne got beautiful? Oh, no, he was her father. So I don't think she did. I need to find out more about Suzanne Reardon when she was growing up, particularly what she looked like. You know. And I want you to locate Barbara Tompkins or uh, Pamela Worth. We can't find anything on it. And I'd really like to see the prosecutor's file. I'm assuming that Frank doesn't know about any of this quasi-legal snooping. That's a good guess, Joe, and I like to keep it that way. Also, um, really check out the local hospitals for the night of the murder. Scissor wounds in particular. Scissor wounds in particular. Did you know your wife's been talking to Jeff Dorso? I had no idea. About what? Suzanne's murder. Now, I wonder how she got onto that. Maybe it was when she took Robin to Dr. Smith's. We're divorced. I can't control what she does. What if Barney finds out that the case has been reopened, Bob? You think he might want to sweeten the deal with the government, tell him everything he knows? You better tell her to back off, because if you don't, you get very ugly. Lucy, where are my keys? It's going soft, Lucy. It's Jeff. I know. You don't need your keys. You're in court down the hall. This is Dr. Smith's number. Schedule me for a makeover consultation. A facelift? No, I want to see if he's going to try to make me into Suzanne. And I'm not going soft, and he's engaged anyway.
Good morning, Mrs. McGrath. How are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. Good. Um, I want to thank you very much for everything you did for Robin. Oh, is she doing all right? Oh, very well, very oh, well. Oh, great. Uh, please, uh, have a seat. Well, what can I do for you? Um, well, um, I, I've been noticing some lines around my, uh, my eyes and, uh, some around my mouth, and I would rather that, uh, but you're, you're the expert, you, you tell me. Thank you. But I'm more interested in the real reason you're considering cosmetic surgery. Well, after 40, everything starts to sag, you know. Forgive me, Mrs. McGrath, but this is not some foolish novelty like getting a tattoo. It's a serious decision. Now, your concern for Robin was very real and deeply considered. I must assume you have very good reasons for coming to me. It would help if I knew them. I just went through a divorce. Oh, that is petty and stupid. It made me feel like I couldn't hold anyone, um, that I wasn't attractive anymore. His new wife is gorgeous. God knows I don't, I don't want him back. I don't want to look 20. Oh. What is it you want, Mrs. McGrath? I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. I just want to be pretty enough to make someone's knees wobble. Oh. Come with me, please. Please sit there. And just look into the camera. Sit back. Mm -hmm. You can smile, you know. Now, stay very still. Are you smiling? Huh? Okay. Now you could look to your left, look at the screen. Uh. Yes, I can. Come back Friday at 4 o'clock. We'll consider the next step. Send her in. Good morning, Mrs. McGrath. Please have a seat. I'm not going ahead with the procedure. Uh -huh. But I would like to ask you some questions about the Reardon case. I'm a DA. I'm helping a colleague with the appeals. So that's what this was all about. Get out of my office. Skip Reardon was not insanely jealous about his wife. Why did you lie to the jury and say he was? Did you do cosmetic surgery on your own daughter? How dare you accuse me of such unprofessional behavior? Is it unprofessional to make other women look just like Suzanne? Is everything okay? 
Yes, thank you. I was able to give a few plain and unhappy young women the kind of beauty Suzanne enjoyed. I freed them from the prison of their faces and transformed their self-hatred into self-worth. Now, if I can do that and honor them with Suzanne's beauty, give me one reason why I shouldn't. They, too, did not want to spend the rest of their lives alone, Mrs. McGrath. You understand, don't you? I can't believe you've been wasting taxpayers' money trying to prove that Skip Ridden is innocent. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm looking for the truth. He murdered her. He was devastated when Suzanne asked him for a divorce. The humiliation of losing a beauty like that made him snap. Oh, that's bull. Not all guys have such infantile pride. Leave it alone, Carrie. Dr. Smith lied on the stand. Okay, you got the jury to believe him. That was your job and you did it very well, but he still lied. Now, if Skip is innocent, you will look like a hero for admitting an honest mistake and getting his sentence dismissed. That The voters just love that kind of moral courage. Yeah, and my opponents will probably accuse me of judicial incompetence and say that I was covering it up. Not if you uncover it. I don't care if you're involved with Jeff Dorso, but I do care when it affects your judgment. He's engaged, Frank. OK, you too, bye. Mm. Who's that charmer? That is Susie Smith before she became Suzanne, the goddess. No. You're kidding. I just talked to her stepfather in California, Wayne Stevens. He was married to Susie's mother after she divorced Dr. Smith. She died one year later. Now, according to Stevens, Susie was a very unhappy girl. His daughters were pretty. What you got here is kind of like a reverse Cinderella story. With Susie being the ugly one, and Dr. Smith playing uh, the fairy godfather. Snip, snip, tuck, tuck. Look at that. I mean, his own daughter. Is, is that sick or what? That is sick. This here is a couple of diaries the stepfather gave me to give to the father. Oh. Isn't it a shame how the Postal Service destroys things? You didn't see this. to see for myself. Thanks for being here, Rose. You should have seen me run. It was like the Olympics. Yeah, well, it was probably just some crazy teenagers trying to scare you. Huh? I like to scare them. I had the house to myself tonight. Debbie and Heather had dates, and Wayne was working. I don't call him Papa anymore. He's a jerk. I'm definitely going to run away. I'll have an apartment on Fifth Avenue, like my real father. There'll be a view of the Empire State Building and guest rooms for my sisters, if they want to visit. Then they'll see how pretty I am. I know when I'm older, I'll be beautiful. I know it.
those dumb people in the car just wanted to take a picture. I found them by the door. Oh, I know. Oh. Oh. Come on, Mom. I'm going to be late. Slow down, honey. I'm going to drop us by the police station later today, but should she even be going to school? Yeah, I think so. Tell school security what's going on, and maybe you could get the babysitter to meet her at the bus from now on. I could pick her up myself. I live ten minutes away. That's that's really sweet, babe. You know, I, I think I think we'll just skip school today and go spend the weekend at the Hoovers. That's what right, we're doing. Good idea. Carrie, before John comes down, I should tell you something. He wanted to warn the governor about your investigation of the Reardon case. What? Oh, I can't believe that. I didn't either. I convinced him to ask the governor to delay submitting the judicial nominations. Oh, Carrie, I thought you wanted to get out of the DA's office. For Robin's sake. Oh, I, I do. For my own sake. Then drop the case. Isn't this attack on Robin a, a clear sign to you? Being a judge is a marvelous opportunity. It suits your talent, your temperament. It'd be a pity to waste it. She's right, Carrie. Look, Frank could fire you. You're not authorized to open up an old case. And Robin is scared. She may act brave with you, but she just told me she's afraid to go home. Oh. I don't think it's wise to pursue this any further. Hello? Jeff, uh... I, I, I just got a minute, but I, I want to tell you, I've been thinking, and... This, this case is going nowhere. You know, we have no real suspect, we have no scissor wounds, we have no black Mercedes. We, we, we really have nothing. So, um, I, I gotta stop. Wait a minute. This is about your judicial appointment. If you had a child, you would understand. So, this is another don't rock the boat. <laughs> I mean, the stakes are higher, but it's the same thing. You are one ambitious lady. Well... Have a good life, Your Honor. Prosecution report. It's hard to get, but it's interesting to read. I'm dropping it, Joe. Interesting how? Okay. They interviewed the caddy at the country club where Suzanne used to hang out. Apparently, she played golf with a lot of guys, but only one regularly, a certain Jimmy Weeks. The caddy saw them leave together often, and he heard him call her Sweetheart, often. You're making this up. Yeah, oh, it gets better. Did you read the paper this morning? Yeah. You know how Bonnie Haskell is thinking of turning state's evidence against Jimmy because of that embezzlement case? Yeah. Well, now the little weasel is saying he might be able to pin a murder on him. Is that interesting or what? What's this? It's your file in the Reardon case. You said you were going to drop it. Jimmy Weeks was a very strong suspect. He's a hustler, a mobster, known ladies' man with a bad temper. Why didn't you tell the defense? It's Brady material, Frank, exculpatory. You had a duty to disclose. I know the law, Carrie. Weeks had an ironclad alibi. The DA's office only wanted Reardon. No, I had his story checked out. If there had been any question, I would have let the defense know. There wasn't, so I didn't. That's it. Drop it, Carrie. That's an order. I'm warning you, Carrie, don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat? That was you, Frank. So you knew about the scissors theory, didn't you? What are you talking about? Oh, what have we done? Skip Reardon was guilty. No, you wanted a conviction on a high-profile case, and I wanted to work in homicide. 
So we took the scissors idea and we threw it in the garbage and we let Skip Reardon rot. That's not true. Oh, yes, it's true, Frank. Grasp it. Reopen the case. If you do, you might come out a hero. At the very least, you'll actually like yourself. Let me make waves, Frank. My soul needs it. Skip Reardon needs it. Let's do it. You're the most contentious woman I've ever met in my whole life. I like it too, Frank. So, Jeff, Jimmy Weeks might be our killer. Joe, give me everything you can find on Dr. Kenneth Charles Smith. Cuz Smith's a suspect too. Can't we have more than one? Let me see for my keys. Cuz Suzanne was his creation. Well, maybe he realized that she wasn't as perfect as he thought, you know, that she was hanging out with mobsters like Jimmy Weeks. You know, would that make him mad enough to kill her? I'll tell you, I want to interview Barney Haskell or his lawyer, find out what murder they're hinting at, and I'm going to go see Barbara Tompkins. Yeah, Dorso, I'm back in the case. Why do you ask? <sighs> Mr. Grath? Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you called. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Uh, let's sit down. Mm-hmm. I appreciate you being available. It's the only time I had. Um, Dr. Smith turned my life around, and I'm very grateful. But now, I can't seem to get rid of him. What do you mean? Well, he's been following me everywhere, calling me, begging me to meet him. So finally, I said yes. And he was very nice. But it... It was weird. The way he looked at me... And then he kept calling me Suzanne. Um, this was his daughter, Suzanne. Oh, he made me look exactly like her. Mm -hmm. And another woman, too. Who knows, there might be a whole platoon of you out there. If he bothers you again, you call out the National Guard. Listen, here's the deal. You can let the jury decide your fate, or you can decide it for yourself. But you've got to tell me what you know. Now, come on, Jimmy has always treated you like garbage. Here's your chance. Perfect justice. You nail him, you go free. Suzanne worked for one of Jimmy's charities. He was uh, crazy about her, always gave her a lot of jewelry. I don't know how uh, friendly they were, but I do know that she was getting tired of him and, and they'd fight a lot. And he got quite physical with her. He sent me to her house one night with some roses to apologize. He wrote this card. Let me call you sweetheart. I'm in love with you. That was from the, the, some, some old song. Jimmy could be quite romantic. Jimmy wants to see you, Suzanne. Tell you he's sorry. I don't want to see him. I can't tell him that. Just, just take the flowers, and uh, here's the card. <laughs> Very sweet. But it's over. Remind him about all the money he made on those land deals, and if he bothers me again. I might have to tell someone. Tell him no, Barney. So, did you tell him? Yeah. He went ballistic. He had this uh, goon working for him, this huge guy. He told him to go straighten her out. Tell her nobody says no to Jimmy Weeks, he said. Teach her a lesson. Next day, she was dead. Before the trial, some uh, investigators were sniffing around, but uh, Jimmy paid us to keep quiet, so we did. All right. We'll put you in the witness protection program. You'll have a new name, a new life. And no more Mr. Weeks. Tell him I don't want to live where it snows. <laughs> you got it.
you to take out the garbage and get started on your homework. But, Mom, how will I ever learn to cook? Not by watching it bake. <laughs> She's a terrific kid. She is the light of my life. Why don't you ever talk about Janet? You know, what's she like? What does she do? Uh, she's an investment counselor. We've known each other since I was 13. Our family's been friends forever. Hmm. Uh, salad bowl. Um, I have one up here. Does she know that you're here? No, I, uh, I didn't mention it. Well, it's none of my business. Oh. Robin? Who's that? Oh, oh my God! Robin, oh my God! Come on! Come on, come on up here! Damn car! They tried to run me over, but I was too late. Are you all right? Are they coming back, Mama? No, 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 baby. Everything's okay. I'm very sorry about this, Kerry, but I don't want you to think you have to leave your house. I've ordered 24-hour protection. We'll pick it's up right. Robin. No, we'll take right. her to school. Thank you, we'll get... thank you, but, you know, I think I'm just... I'm going to take Robin up to the Hoovers. You know, she's going to be safe there. Thanks. Sweetie, that's good. Why is someone trying to hurt me, Mom? Darling, I have no idea. Let's get in the car, baby. All right. All right. All right. All right, All right guys, let's back out. Let him out. Let's move the cars, okay. please. Like now. All right, you thanks for everything. Anything. I'll do it. I'll do it. You'll hear from me. Okay. Bye-bye. Darling, I'm so sorry. So sorry. You oh, all right? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. How's that little girl? Oh, she's fine. It's, it's good she's here. Uh, come on. I'm Jonathan. Oh, hi, Hello. How are you? I'm Jeff. Please go up. Nice Emmy, to meet you. Please go in. All right. You got everything? Yep, I'm okay. All right. She's fine. She's just fine. Oh, hi, oh, Jeff. Jimmy, my daughter was almost hit by a car last night when she was taking out the garbage. It would have been a hit and run. They almost succeeded. Scared her half to death. That's terrible. I'm sorry to hear that, Bobby. Why is it bad things always happen to good people? Nothing had better happen to my daughter. Hey, Bobby, Carrie's a high-profile prosecutor. She ought to take that judicial appointment, stop sticking her nose in everybody's business. Carrie? Mm -hmm. Someone's here to see you. Hi, Bob. Come in. <clears throat> I, uh, want you to drop the Sweetheart Roses murder case. You said I was on it. It's not exactly a secret. Now, you must know by now that, uh, Jimmy Weeks has had a relationship with Suzanne. Sure I know. So what? Well, Jimmy's got quite a lot on his plate right now, and I don't particularly want to see his name dragged into the Reardon case. Hmm, what's he hiding? Nothing. I honestly don't know. Just think you should drop it, okay? Did you tell him I'm on it? No. I just want you to drop the case. For God's sake, does everything have to be an interrogation with you? I am trying to save our daughter's 
life. Oh, you're pathetic. Don't you think I know that Jimmy's behind the attack on Robin? No, you don't know. No, I can't prove it, but I do know it, and so do you. And you know he blew Barney Haskell's brains out. You don't know that. But you're his lawyer, you know? It's not your responsibility that he is a murdering cockroach. But doesn't your deal with your client end when he starts threatening your daughter? Or am I expecting you to have more moral fiber than you've got? No, I resent that. I'm trying to protect you. No, you're protecting Jimmy Weeks. I mean, my God, what, what's sacred to you? You know, I, I, I didn't think I was going to get through to you. You know, you never listen. You never listen in your life! Wasn't that your uh, ex? I'm gonna come back. No, no. An era just ended. Where you got, Joe? <sighs> Dr. Smith drives a black Mercedes 560 SEL which he's owned for 11 years. I remember that babysitter across the street from the Reardons. Uh, she said she saw uh, an L and an S or a five on the plate. Smith's plates are L-I-L 505. I think he was there that night. I thought Jimmy Weeks did it. If he didn't do it, why is he going to so much trouble to get me off the case? Suzanne would never play around with a guy like Jimmy Weeks. Why not? She already said she didn't want you anymore. Her father didn't give her the jewelry. But for guys like Jimmy Weeks, it was standard payment. She's sorry to be so blunt. What about the diamond pin? Who gave it to her? Why was it stolen? What did Suzanne say about it? She told Skip her father gave it to her, but he denied it, and all attempts to track it down failed. I remember Suzanne talking to an antique dealer at an auction. He said he'd only seen one like it, but he didn't know who made it. Do you remember his name? The auction? This pin could be our link to the killer. I'll put Joe on it. And if he doesn't find it, I mean, is that what we're down to? No. We're going to find the guy who killed your wife and get you out. That's what we're down to. You can count on it. And most importantly, more prisons or more rehabilitation. It is this delicate balance that must be addressed. Carrie, it's Bob. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'll call you back. I just found out it was Jimmy Weeks. He has this creep who works for him named Dakota. Jimmy sent him over to kill Suzanne. Dakota was there that night. Who told you this? Bob. Can you believe it? Must be Get Redemption Week. Life's good, Jeffrey. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? Going to Atlantic City. Okay. Where's John Paranson? He's holding over there. Thanks. So how many times have you arrested for assault, Joe? Oh, you're kidding. And how to get the street name Dakota? Bismarck. Where, where's Bismarck? North Dakota is a state west of Jersey. Here we are. Oh, here we are, Joe. Bye. Dakota! Are you John Berenson? What do you want? We'd like to talk to you about Suzanne Reardon. I'm Jeff Dorso. I've been handling the appeals on the Reardon case. This is Kerry McGrath. Jersey prosecutor who's helping me out. We have reason to believe you were in the house the night Suzanne Reardon was murdered. We know you were in the house. We have a witness. You don't got no witnesses, lady. Don't give me that. What I have is an innocent man who's in jail, and if I have to sacrifice you to get him out, then I will. 16 assaults and two convictions, I think you owe the state some time. So help out or pay up. What are you on my case for? I didn't do nothing. We don't want you, Dakota. We want Jimmy Weeks. So just tell us what you were doing in the house. See you in prison. Hold it. Jimmy sent me, OK? He wanted me to whack her, but I'd never done it. Maybe knock her around a bit, wake her up.
out of my house. I'll scream. I'll call the police. nothing. But I figured once it all came out, I'd get fingered for it. So I split, covered my tracks, you know? I never told Jimmy what happened. Did you see the face of the killer? No. How do we know you didn't kill her? And take the diamond pin? I mean, you, you could be making this all up. Uh, we, we believe you. If you remember anything else, please uh, give me a call. Thanks. Bye. Do you have a death wish? Well, I'll tell you, the irony's just too much. All these years, Jimmy Weeks thought he was responsible for Suzanne's murder. No wonder he wanted me out the case. Which leads Dr. Smith. What was so important about a diamond pin that he would murder his own daughter to get it back? Unless Dakota is lying. Jimmy gave her the pin, sent Dakota to get it back, she wouldn't give it back, and he killed her. What about Frank Green? He knew Suzanne, and why does he want to go with this case so badly? You knew Suzanne. Jimmy Weeks knew Suzanne. Barney Haskell knew Suzanne. The whole world knew Suzanne. It was a crime of passion. She wasn't killed by an acquaintance. You know, maybe we're missing the obvious here. Maybe it was Skip. No. No way. It wasn't Skip. I need to get directions back to the freeway. Skip is innocent, Carrie. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, is, uh, is this Carrie? Is, uh, Robin there? Oh, um, well, when she gets back, would you let her know I'm gonna be late tonight? Thanks. Well, I, I have an appointment. I want to talk to Dr. Smith. No, I, I don't necessarily think he's guilty. I, I want to find out why he's lying. Oh, yeah, I'll be careful. So? I know where I'm going. <laughs> OK. I hope. What is it you want, Mrs. McGrath? Well, Dr. Smith, you lied to me. You did do a makeover on your daughter. So? That's not a crime. Killing her is. What are you saying? Her wedding day must have been a dark day for you. Then when she started hanging out with Jimmy Weeks, it was just too much. So you confronted her, demanded she return the jewelry to Jimmy, and she refused. She defied you. You had a fight, and you killed her. How can you accuse me of such things? I would never harm her. I loved her. I gave her a life. You so immersed in filth that you could even imagine such depravity. Where is your mind? Your lies sent an innocent man to jail. These jealous rages of Skips, there were none. Now, I, we know you were at the house that night and neighbors saw your car, so what were you doing there? Suzanne would never have been involved with a mobster like Jimmy Weeks. She was faithful to her husband. But he was insanely jealous of her. And I was not at her house. Now get out of here, Mrs. McGrath. You're protecting her. I get it. That's what this was about, to... to protect the sanctity of your creation. You let Skip go to jail. Very good, Doctor.
Suzanne! 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 back home. Really? You sure? Yeah. Everyone has to drive hundreds of miles taking me to school and stuff. It's a waste of fossil fuels. Besides, our house needs to be taken care of. It can't just sit there. So I want to move back. May I offer a rebuttal? Mm-hmm. I would drive a thousand miles for one of your smiles. Not to mention making sure that you are safe. Now, Lucy's helping me look after the house and the plants. You get home cook food here. But Mom, I love you. And if I were home, I'd get to see you more. You know I really don't mind taking out food. Oh, baby. Okay, we'll go home on Sunday. Everything's gonna be okay. The shooting of Dr. Smith has left members of the medical community in shock. Dr. Smith set new standards in cosmetic surgery. His home had been ransacked, but apparently nothing appeared to be stolen. Oh. Investigations are still underway. Oh, no. Well, maybe if I hadn't pushed him so hard, he would have told me the truth. I doubt it. Joe can't get any leads on the diamond pin, either. Looks like we're back at the very beginning, except so most of the people are dead. Who killed Dr. Smith? What in the world were they looking for? You should have told me you were going. You could have been killed. I could have lost you. Wait, what about Janet? I broke off the engagement three weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me? Because the truth is, it ended three weeks before that. 
the day you walked into my life. <laughs> After that, Janet was history. Uh. Oh, you're gonna have to answer that? Yeah. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Lucy, she's right here. It's better be good. Dr. Smith wrote me a letter. I'll be right there. Bingo. Uh, Mrs. McGrath, I did not kill Suzanne. Skip did not kill her. I wanted her to be free of him. He didn't deserve her. I have made her beautiful. The world made her ugly. No one cares. Dr. Charles Smith. gonna spend the rest of my life here. Hello. Hi, Jeff. Uh, I, I'm glad you called. Um, did I mention dinner tonight up at the Hoovers? Uh, no, you didn't mention anything about dinner. Oh, sorry. Um, can you come? Well, we got this uh, family get together. I really think I should be there. Oh, okay. Well. Um, maybe you can come up tomorrow. We'll uh, we'll go canoeing or something. You know, I think it's time you met my family. Hmm. I don't know. I told them all about you. How fascinating, beautiful, warm, and real you are. Oh, stop it. Hey. They see me with a big smile on my face, so now they want to meet this lady. You... You go have a good time with your family tonight, and, uh... Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. I could like this man. Robin, hi, baby. I'm in the car. I'll be up there in about 45 minutes. Let everyone know, okay? All right, bye. Punctured chest wound, 22 stitches. The same night, Suzanne got murdered. Hi, may I please speak with Sass? Not in right now. Can you call back later? Yeah, thanks. I can't find this guy, Barbara, anywhere. It's got to be a made-up name. Barbara, Barbara. How old is Jonathan Hoover? Late 60s, I think. Why? William Barber is Grace Hoover's father's name. Get Frank Green on the phone. Carrie's in trouble. I want a police helicopter. Tell Frank to get me a helicopter now. Right now. And get Carrie on her cell phone. Never end. 
Guess what I found? What? A picture of you when you were 22. Come on, I'll show you. Oh, why don't you say hello first? No, Grace is resting and Jonathan's working. Come on. All right, all right. What'd you find? Oh. Grace said this is when you first came to house sit for them. Look how long your hair was. Yeah, look how young I was. Boy, I must have been enough about that. Oh, this is beautiful of Grace. What's wrong? Come on, Badger. That's a boy. Hello, Carrie. I've got the weekend all planned. There's something wrong. Jonathan, what have you done? Robin, I think Grace is getting up now. Would you go and help her? Well, yeah. What are you? Come on, Badger. Come on. Get me the sheriff's office. You gave her Grace's pin? Don't, Carrie. Please don't. Suzanne doesn't seem like your type, Senator. She wasn't. She was the worst kind of opportunist. But I needed her. Grace's medical expenses were enormous. I needed the money. I knew that the highway department was planning an extension of the turnpike into Princeton. Obviously, if anyone had access to the survey, they could buy the land and make a killing when the state purchased the right of way. Suzanne brokered a deal between me and Jimmy Weeks. Cash for the survey. And what was the diamond pin? Her cut? Or was she just so beautiful? Grace never wore the pin. She kept it in her safety deposit box. Then she wanted to wear it for the governor's ball. I had to get it back. Why didn't you tell Grace the truth instead of killing Suzanne? It was an accident. I didn't mean to. More gifts from Jimmy? Get out of here, Jimmy. Just give me the diamond pin and I'll be on my way. No, you gave it to me. Buy her another one now that you're so rich. Give it back to me, Suzanne. I mean it. Get out of my house. I'll scream. I'll call the police. back to me. <laughs> you were so charming when you wanted the money. So senatorial. But now look at you, whining like a petulant child. <laughs> That's who you really are, isn't it? One more time, Suzanne. Give it to me. It belongs to my wife. No, it's mine. That crippled old hag doesn't need it. Now get out! <laughs> pin was in a jewelry box. It's an irony. The ball was canceled. Grace never wore the pin. Put it down. Why didn't you listen? Why did you persist? Why couldn't you just leave it alone? I had to help Grace. She is my life, my only happiness. You didn't do this for Grace. You did it for you. You did it for the money, the power, and a little something on the side. You don't deserve to walk in Grace's shadow. Grace is coming. Mom? Come here, honey. Come here. Put, put the gun down, Jonathan. You should have listened. Don't do this, Jonathan. Please, put the gun down. I did it for you. We'll lose everything. Don't be a fool.
Where'd Robin go? Uh, probably outside. She likes knowing that we're safe. Have you heard from Grace? I got a letter from her. Dearest Carrie, I'm going home to South Carolina to live with my sister. I knew that Jonathan had peddled the highway survey to Jimmy Weeks. And I knew, and I knew he was involved with Suzanne. But I knew it wouldn't last. I thought I was doing the right thing by not speaking up. This tragedy would not have happened if I had. Now I must live with it. Please forgive me and forgive Jonathan, if you can. Love, Grace. Ugh. Men do very stupid things for beautiful women. And women do some very stupid things to be beautiful for men. Mm-hmm. You know what Jeffrey said, Mom? Uh, you repeat that, and I will pound you into the carpet until there's nothing left but a tiny dark spot. What? He said that you're beautiful. And then he asked me what you'd say if he had asked you to marry him. And I said you'd probably cry, but in the end, say yes and jump him. Jump him? Jump him? What kind of one? All right. right. TV for you. Yes. Right now. What's it for you? Yes. Yes? Yes. Hard to believe they're actually getting married, isn't it? No, he'll be taking care of her car keys. <laughs> no, Lucy, never. No man could ever do that. <laughs> Shh, here they come. I guess it's time. Place your left hand on the Bible and repeat after me. I carry McGrath to solemnly swear. I carry McGrath to solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of this state. To support the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the United States. And to uphold the duties of my office. And to uphold the duties of my office. Solemnly, faithfully, and impartially. Solemnly faithfully and impartially. And to the best of my ability, so help me God. And to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. 